and Kelly also works with us. Um, I'm glad you guys can make it. I um, first will go over the five grants under Workforce Development Training Fund, and uh, then we'll open it up for questions um, that you guys can ask either verbally or through the Q&A, the chat function, or um, just by raising your hand, um, we'll be monitoring all of that as we go along. So um, let's see. Let me go ahead and share my screen with you all. Um, and also just to let you know that we are recording, I think it gives you a notification of that anyways, but we like to record these and then post them on the website for um, folks who couldn't make it uh, for them to watch. Um, there we go. Okay, Johnny, um, would you mind sharing your screen? It's not letting me do it. Sure, just give me one moment. Thank you. So just to give kind of a high level of all the grants, they are all reimbursement models. There is apprenticeship, an apprenticeship grant, a business training grant, an internship grant, and then a pre-hire grant. And then there's also a um, pre-obligation opportunity, funding opportunity of, of training funds. So we'll go ahead and go over all of that with you, starting with, um, we're gonna jump to the business training grant just because I do um, think that some, one of the, one of my coworkers will be jumping on to go over the apprenticeship grant. So while we're um, waiting on that, I'll go ahead and start with the business training grant. So the business training grant is um, the general purpose, let me get my screens organized here, sorry. Okay. Um, so the purpose of the business training grant is to provide uh, assistance to businesses for them to um, train their employees and the training should either correct an employee's skill deficiency or upgrade their, their current skill level within their business and their, within their occupation. There also, it's also a requirement for there to be a direct relationship between the training event that they're attending and the trainee's current occupation within the business. Um, and if you could scroll down just a little bit, Johnny. Um, so the, the skill upgrade will either need to enhance the business's productivity, efficiency, or profitability, reduce employee turnover, or enhance the employee's wages. Um, and then go down just a little bit and we'll go over the, the funding limits. So in general, each business get is eligible for up to $2,000 per trainee per fiscal year. And if they are, if they fall under preferred industry, which I will go over that um, further down, then they are eligible for three thousand dollars per training per fiscal year. Uh, and as a business, you are eligible for seventy five thousand dollars per fiscal year. Um, and just for your information, the fiscal year, our fiscal year goes from July first through June thirtieth. We are currently in fiscal year twenty four, and it ends June thirtieth of two thousand twenty four. Um, so here are a list of, of helpful forms and documents as you work through the, the business training grant application, um, creating your business account, just uh, lots of different resources that you can upload in your, in your application or in your final report. Um, the first thing, if you're very new to this, this grant, I would say to read 
that first one action items to apply for a grant first. Um, and this just kind of gives you a pretty high level of, of the steps that it takes to, to complete from square one um, all the way to submitting your application. Uh, so it goes over um, creating your business account. So you'll do that in the online grant management system. Uh, and in order to create that account and get approved, you are required to be in good standing with unemployment insurance, workers' compensation, Secretary of State, and Wyoming at Work, which is our, which is the Department of Workforce Services Labor Management site. It has lots of helpful resources for employers as well as employees. Um, so you'll need to register with them and uh, have an account with, with them in order to be eligible to apply under the business training grant. Um, and just um, one, of, one of the things that the business training grant is unique in is that it is the only grant under Workforce Development Training Fund that is currently in an online grant system. Um, and so that is why you have to create that, that business account for, in order to apply. Once you have that account set up, um, it, it takes about seven to 10 business days for us to review it, for all the entities to come back um, with the updated status as in good standing. And then we'll approve it if all of that checks out and if the business is eligible. And um, you'll get a, an email to confirm and verify your email address. And then at that point, you'll set your own account up in the online grant system with the username and password. And you'll be able to submit applications or create applications, sorry. Um, at that point. And we are currently under all of the grants, accepting applications the first through the seventh of each month. Um, and for business training grants, well, for all of them, for all of our grants, you'll need to submit an application at least 30 days before the first day um, for business training grants, the first day of training or the first day of travel. And, um, but they also need to be submitted within that first seven days of each month. Um, and then it, it is important to go ahead and go over the rules before submitting any, any um, application. And that is also listed here. Um, and I would, I would just in general recommend to to go through our website, whichever grant you wanna focus on, maybe take a look at all of those rules and um, the pages for each of the grants and get yourself familiarized with, with the requirements and the process uh, before submitting an application. Okay, Johnny, can you scroll down? So this, um, goes a little bit more into detail as far as the steps for an online application. So step one is to create your account um, and making sure that you are in good standing with the entities that I mentioned before, and it's also listed here. Um, and then keep, keep scrolling for me. Uh, so here's the link to um, the instructions to create your business account. And then it's also a link to our online system where you go to create your account and to create applications. Um, and then also a, a good time to make sure that you are set up with our uh, Wyoming State Auditor's Office, um, the fiscal payment system here, that is how we will um, eventually reimburse reimburse the business. So just making sure that you're set up with them and you have a W-9 filled out and submitted to us, as well as um, a voided check if you would like direct deposit with all the correct information, up-to-date information on that. Um, and then 
the step four there. That's another, it's a link again to the, the online grant system. And then it gives pretty detailed instructions on how to create an application and um, all the steps and screenshots and everything in there about um, how to go through that process. And it gives some more information there. Um, like I said, it has to be submitted between 30 and 110 days of the first day of training. Uh, we are, in general, um, because of the limited funding that we we do have, we do generally look at um, application. We we give preference to the applications that are for training that takes place in the following month. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind. And we also provide technical assistance up until the application is submitted. And once it's submitted, we are accepting those applications as is and um, no longer provide technical assistance after it's been submitted. So if you come across anything that you're not sure of or you're questioning, please feel free to reach out via email, which will pop into the chat. Um, we have a designated WDTF email that you can send any of those questions to. Uh, or you can give us a call um, and we'll put our main phone number in the chat as well. Um, and let's see. I think what we need to do, Johnny, is go back to the WDTF homepage just so I can go over the preferred industries. So here's the list of the, the industries that are designated as the preferred industries by the Workforce Development Council. Um, as you can see here, it's construction, finance and insurance, healthcare and social assistance, manufacturing, technology, hospitality, and tourism. Um, and here's also where you can, you can find our main contact information for the Workforce Development Training Fund as a program. Um, I think that, can you, sorry, Johnny, can you go back to the BTG? Okay. So in general, the, the, process for the business training grant is you submit the application, um, we review it, and you usually hear back from us within a couple weeks of the window closing, whether it's been approved or denied. And um, if it is approved, then of course, the, we will enter into a contract, we'll send you a letter of agreement for signature, we will obtain the final signature, which means that that um, letter of agreement is executed. Once it's executed and um, the training period comes up, then the trainee attends the training. And 45 days after the training period ends, that is when the businesses can uh, submit their final report, which entails um, the receipts for the expenses that were requested, as well as a summary from each of the trainees telling how it benefited each of them, um, as well as employment verification showing that the trainee, the trainee ret retained employment 45 days after the end of that training period, um, along with potentially other documents that are um, requested at the final report. Uh, and at the final report, we, we do um, provide technical assistance after you submit the final report. Um, so if you have any questions after that, after you submit your final report, then we are, we are able to provide that technical assistance at that time. Um, and then once uh, this, the final report is is 
approved, everything is, is um, sufficient and meets all the requirements, then we can approve that final report and then um, request the, the reimbursement to fiscal for, for them to reimburse the business. I think that is all for um, business training grant. I guess there, there are a couple more links here that have um, the frequently asked questions as well as some helpful hints under the business training grant that's specific to that grant. So um, as, you, as you look through the website, those are very helpful and lots of things that, um, lots of questions that we've received that uh, are helpful to the businesses as they work through any part of the process. And I will go ahead and let me get back to where I need to be, sorry. Um, I will go ahead and turn it to Ivy Moore, who is um, the apprenticeship grant manager, Ivy. Go ahead. Thank you very much. Hi, everyone. My name is Ivy Moore. Um, I'm the apprenticeship program lead through the Department of Workforce Services. I work really closely with this team to provide technical assistance and support to our registered apprenticeship programs and our businesses interested in becoming apprenticeship programs across the state. So I wanted to start off by just kind of talking about what registered apprenticeships are. Um, there can be some misconceptions that they are a dated trading program that are only applicable to, you know, construction and welding. Um, but that's really grown over the last few years and expanded. And we're looking at IT and finance, um, culinary, healthcare, manufacturing. So really one thing that, that we really like to promote is that apprenticeship industries are expanding and we have a lot of opportunities to support businesses who may be interested in looking at this training opportunity. So um, some of the key elements of registered apprenticeship programs are that they are industry vetted. So we really work to approve programs that ensure alignment with industry standards and what those workforce needs look like. Apprenticeship programs are a paid opportunity for the apprentices. Those apprentices um, will actually earn progressive wages as their skills and competencies progress. Those um, wage increases are actually identified by the employer and our Wyoming Office of Apprenticeship Director. When you go to register your program with the U.S. Department of Labor Office of Apprenticeship um, here in Wyoming, that's something that you'll work with them to, to develop what that pathway looks like and what those standards look like. Um, another key component is the on-the-job learning and the mentorship. So we really want to make sure that we're preparing apprentices for a successful and long-term career. Um, and having that, that hands-on training with a mentor is really critical for them to excel and succeed in that industry. The next portion is um, the related technical instruction or the supplemental education. This is where apprentices are provided with supplemental education based on the employer's unique training needs and what those industry needs um, to create quality and successful work. A few things that the Department of Labor do focus on for registered apprenticeship programs is diversity and looking at how programs are de designed um, to support the communities that um, they're located in. And then also looking at quality and safety um, we really want to make sure that all of our apprentices are afforded worker protections while they're receiving rigorous training. Um, it is a long-term training opportunity, registered apprenticeship programs, um, and they'll also be earning credentials along the way. So most programs um, will receive some sort of credential through the actual employer and whatever their related instruction provider is but then all apprentices are actually awarded a nationally recognized credential by the Department of Labor that um, they can keep throughout their career. And it's actually um, something that can be taken anywhere in the nation and be recognized. So to dive into some of the grant information, um, the, the Workforce Development Training Fund Apprenticeship Grant um, is, is specifically for registered apprenticeship sponsors or the related technical instruction provider. 
Um, they do need to be a Wyoming based employer um, and the sponsor must be registered with that US Department of Labor Office of Apprenticeship. The, the applicants can be either the sponsor of the program or the related technical instruction provider that's associated with that sponsor. And what we can do is we can look at reimbursing the expenses that occur during that formal related instruction or that supplemental education. That can actually be provided a number of ways. So it can be provided in-house through a certified instructor. It can be provided through an online training entity, and then it can be also provided by um, a physical training provider, whether that's a training facility, um, like a joint apprenticeship training center, a community college, or the university. Some of those expenses that are covered through the WDTF apprenticeship grant include tuition, registration, class fees, license and certification expenses. And then if we're looking at um, the in-house training where you're utilizing a certified instructor, we can look at some of those instructor wages and fringe benefits. So um, those are kind of those key components of what's covered and what services we can include in that grant. Um, and then some of, we can dive into the apprenticeship grant forms and rules. So, um, the, the first link is gonna be just those instructions and sample questions. That's gonna give you kind of a sneak peek at what that application looks like. Um, so just some general information about the application. And then we do require um, a couple different um, attachments for that application. So we can kind of dive into some of those. Um, we can go to probably the next form this is a lot of like overarching information for the grant. So this is the actual grant application. Um, it is a Google form similar to all of the other applications underneath WDTF. Um, I know that Johnny and Sharon Geisler have both been working on kind of revamping this and making it a little bit more accessible and easier to fill out. Um, we do recognize that registered apprenticeship programs do have paperwork on the federal side for audits and just maintenance of their program. So we really don't want to add to any more of that capacity that you guys are already taking on um, with creating such an amazing training opportunity for individuals. We can probably go back. Um, and then we've got the grant rules. I would highly recommend reviewing those prior to filling out the application. This is gonna go over all of the specific rules that pertain to our Workforce Development Training Fund Apprenticeship Grant. Um, it, it really is gonna help you step-by-step step go through that application. And if there are any questions in regards to the rules or to the application, I would recommend utilizing the WDTF email because um, if you want one of us, you'll reach all of us, which is nice. And then those last um, two forms are for the final report. So um, reimbursing, reimbursement can look different for every single program. Um, for example, some of our community colleges are, are the RTI providers for our apprenticeship programs. And so they're um, requesting reimbursement per semester. Um, once those apprentices complete the training within that semester, they can send us um, the forms for reimbursement. We have employers that ask for a one-year time frame, and then they'll get reimbursement at the very end of their first year of training or whatever year that they're in for that apprenticeship program. And then these final reports come at the very end um, once you're closing out that apprenticeship um, grant. I don't know that I have anything else for apprenticeships. Um, I know it's a lot of information, and apprenticeships are truly a spider web. Um, I, I like to promote them as a one-size-fits-all workforce solution. Um, they are a long-term um, training opportunity, so it really does help with recruitment, retention, um, and just longevity of your employees and the quality of work that they provide for your business. So if there are any questions or inquiries about apprenticeships, I'd highly recommend using that WDTF email. Um, you'll get Sharon Geisler, myself, Johnny, um, Brittany, and, and we can point you in the right direction. So thank you very much. Thank you, Ivy. Um, I think 
next we can go ahead and go over internships and I will leave that to Johnny and I actually have to step away. Um, so thank you for, for joining everybody and um, Johnny, I'll let you take it from here. Thank you, Brittany. Uh, welcome everyone. Uh, we're gonna be starting off with the internship grants. The internship grants are uh, like many of the grants, uh, very popular within the business community here in Wyoming. Uh, the internship grants um, do emphasize a structured learning experience where individuals can uh, not only uh, delve into a career that, that they are possibly pursuing or potentially uh, uh, definitely pursuing, but it gives them a chance to uh, delve and experience the, um, the actual day-to-day -day environment within the business and within the industry. Um, the in internships are open to Wyoming-based uh, businesses, and the internship work would be completed here in the state of Wyoming. And um, uh, as we mentioned earlier, it is a practical learning experience. It's also a structured learning experience. Um, and the interns would be um, committed to uh, producing for the company, as well as gaining from the company. Uh, it's WDTF's hope that this experience is a synergy between the two so that the intern can uh, provide a ben be a benefit to the business and also the business can uh, provide uh, valuable information to the intern during their internship. Um, it's an opportunity to observe, to contribute to the organization, uh, potentially rotate through different uh, roles within the organization. Um, it provides a great opportunity to build a network for the intern for future growth and advancement within the industry, uh, networking opportunities, and a mentorship. One of the caveats that is required within the internship uh, grant is that the business provide solid professional um, and qualified leadership to mentor the, the interns during their internship. Uh, a mentor can only uh, mentor up to two individuals so that the mentorship can be um, uh, focused as much as possible on the needs of the individual interns. Uh, excuse me, the training can be either uh, on-the-job training. Uh, sometimes it's also uh, through feedback between the intern and the management of the business so that they can uh, observe the intern on a daily, weekly basis and meet regularly with the interns to provide constructive feedback and discuss you know, what, uh, what their uh, growth uh, challenges are what they're uh, what they're learning, how they're going to be putting that to work, and um, asking if there's any issues that um, that they are having difficulty with, or any skills that they feel like they um, may still need to be to tone up to uh, to perform um, in the internship role. Um, the new parameters that came into place this past spring for the internship uh, provide up to 480 hours. Uh, Per intern, for intern, per internship, uh, depending on whether or not the internship is full time or part time, that could be up to um, uh, twelve weeks, or it could be up to six months in length, uh, depending on again the structure of the internship. Um, it is a reimbursement based in, uh, grant, just like uh, most of the grants within WDTF, and we, wages can be reimbursed up to eighteen dollars per hour, with supporting documentation. Um, you are, of course, um, um, free to provide whatever documentation you feel like uh, substantiates um, your chosen wage for that role. We do suggest ONET online because it is one of the um, most accessible and also one of the most um, informative and um, valuable resources um, in the on this website for the internship grant, not only do we have the link for ONET, but we also have um, within the internship grant instructions and sample questions, there is a link to step-by-step uh, -step instructions on how to use ONET. Um, when providing the wage documentation for the internship, one of the things that um, is most valuable and most important to remember is that we do prefer um, that the wage documentation be hourly um, and that the um, wage documentation be Wyoming based. Um, it must be Wyoming based, but unfortunately, we can't be we can't have the uh, wage document be specific to 
different regions within the state because it is going to be a statewide uh, average for that role or for that job description. A business can have up to three internships within a fiscal year. And uh, if one internship does carry over past the fiscal, into the fiscal year, into the next, then that intern does count toward the three of the uh, interns allowed at any given time for a business uh, during the given fiscal year. Um, the internship um, is designed as an opportunity specifically for the intern, and the intern is to be hired specifically for the internship. The intern uh, for that business can be hired uh, no earlier than one month prior to the submission of the application and uh, no later than two months after the execution of the contract, allowing um, at the very least two months for the business to uh, search for an appropriate uh, intern, um, uh, as well as if someone is brand new to the company and they feel the company feels like it'd be a good, that the intern would be, the person would be a good fit for the internship, then they can be considered as well. Um, it is important also to realize that the internship um, is a short-term um, uh, program, a short-term experience for the intern. Um, and so uh, it is not meant to be a substitute for long-term positions that the company would by needs uh, need to fill uh, uh, in any normal circumstances. Again, the emphasis being on structured learning uh, for the intern. Uh, a couple of great links on these uh, on the web pages. And just to echo what um, Brittany and Ivy said earlier, uh, the website really is the first and most valuable resource uh, that any business should go to when considering one of the WDTF grants. Uh, the, the information on there is uh, the most up to date and anything that's on the website, um, it is changed very frequently just to make sure that the information uh, is the most up to date. The internship application instructions and sample questions similar to the apprenticeship is a good snapshot of what to expect when, uh, when approaching the application, the Google online application form. Um, not only are there sample questions for someone uh, who's applying for an internship grant, uh, there is a cost projection worksheet that is available to the business so that they can um, kind of get an idea of what the expenditures are going to look like, um, what they're going to be uh, requesting as far as reimbursements, total reimbursements over the given uh, internship period. You'll see that on the left here, internship one, two, and three for, to accommodate the three interns, uh, the specific role. These could be duplicated, but when you're completing the application, we do ask that they be itemized so that there is an intern one, even if the intern one and intern two do have the uh, same job role, uh, that they be itemized separately. Uh, and of course, the start and end date of the um, of the internship that, that's uh, being proposed, uh, total number of weeks, hourly wage, and the total number of hours for that internship. Uh, and um, again, 480 hours up to $18 per hour per intern. As mentioned earlier, uh, one of the first things that a business should contemplate, uh, well, not contemplate, that should be actively doing prior to submitting the application is make sure that they're uh, in good standing with Wyoming Unemployment Insurance, Wyoming Workers' Compensation, as well as the Wyoming Secretary of State. Um, it's often, we're often uh, asked uh, if, what do we need to register if we're not required um, to uh, pay unemployment insurance? Perhaps the company's uh, too small to be required to do that. Uh, our answer is always yes, you do need to be uh, at least registered with those three organizations and in good standing. So uh, it's always a good um, uh, a good bet to contact the organization and uh, make sure that your registration is active and that your uh, registration is up to date. And again, as Brittany mentioned earlier, some step-by-step -step instructions uh, prior to submitting uh, the application. Uh, we mentioned here that there was in being in good, good standing with the three um, primary uh, agencies for compliance. And we've already mentioned about the eligibility for 
an internship grant for the interns. A business can have an intern in mind when they apply for the internship. But again, it is um, important to keep in mind that the individual, uh, if the individual is already a member of the um, company's payroll, then they can only have been a member uh, for um, less than a month if, to be eligible for the grant itself. And the internship grant, again, is a Google application. Um, this one is um, on hold right now because we're not accepting applications right now because uh, it, we accept applications only the first seven days per calendar year. And I, you, you, you've heard it already a couple of times, and I'll go ahead and say it a third time. It is so very important to to make sure that you read through the internship rules uh, because all of the information, uh, just about every one of the policies, well, not just about all of the policies that uh, are emphasized with WDTF come primarily from uh, the rules uh, that we are bound by. Here is the link to the uh, ONET step-by-step -step instructions that you need when providing the wage documentation for the grant. Okay, that's a brief overview of uh, the internship grant. Uh, we're gonna jump over to the pre-hire grant. Um, the pre-hire grant, um, I often say, is, is just a, a, a really wonderful synergy uh, within a community uh, and is one of the best examples of WDTF providing a grant opportunity to meet a specific need within a business community uh, within Wyoming. The four entities that are involved with the pre-hire grant um, are the training entity, a business or group of businesses or industry who have determined that there is a need for workers, the local regional or economic development entity, uh, and the local workforce center. And in a nutshell, um, the way the synergy occurs and uh, is most successful is when a business or an industry has determined that there is a uh, um, genuine need within the community because they are having difficulty filling uh, certain jobs, certain roles or, or, or positions within um, uh, that industry or within that business. Uh, perhaps they have um, a new plant that has specific machinery that can only be operated uh, by qualified individuals and they're not having luck finding those qualified individuals within that community, then this is where a pre-hire uh, 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 economic development grant can come into, uh, come into um, uh, providing a great benefit for the community. The business then will approach a training entity. That training entity could be um, the local community college or it could be an independent uh, training provider. And they discuss with the training entity um, how best to create the training that would fill the need that that business has. Um, during this entire process, they're also uh, in contact and in discussions with the local regional or economic development entity because, uh, of course, the, the local economic development entity has um, the concern and has the best interest of the community economically, um, first and foremost, on their mind. And so uh, it makes sense that the economic development entity be uh, informed and be uh, utilized as a great resource during the development of the training. The local workforce center uh, within that community also is of great value because that is going to be one of the best places for the recruitment of workers uh, to attend the training. The training, uh, the, the attendance, uh, the, the individuals who take part in the training uh, must be unemployed uh, and must also, if they have been employed, uh, not be employed in the industry to which they're uh, about to undergo training. Uh, this is meant to fill a void, uh, uh, a, net, uh, a business and a labor void that is uh, currently occurring within that uh, community. Um, the parameters um, that have been put, put into place um, for reimbursement uh, are not a wage-based reimbursement, but they are uh, based on the uh, expenses that are incurred during uh, and for the uh, training itself. And um, the budget worksheet that um, is included in the pre-hire application instructions and um, sample questions, the link rather, shows the four categories that are covered uh, as far as allowable expenses. Uh, tuition or registration that is directly related to the training, 
class fees and materials that again, directly related to the training, uh, licenses and certifications that are uh, need to be obtained as part of the training. And then of course, any kind of aptitude test screenings that uh, would take place as far as uh, completing the training so that they are ready for employment. This is another one of those uh, great resources, again, with the application instructions and sample questions uh, that provide uh, a little bit more insight into the pre-hire grant. As you might expect just from listening to this, the pre-hire grant is one of those um, uh, opportunities that does involve commitment because it does involve a great deal of uh, uh, organization and work prior to submitting the application, uh, a great deal of um, uh, collaboration between those four entities prior to uh, submitting the application. If you have any questions or think that uh, this might be an opportunity for you or for your business, uh, we would certainly love to discuss that with you. You can reach out to us again at the dedicated uh, email or that telephone number that um, was listed earlier. We'll try to get that into the chat before the end of the hour. Um, let's see. Uh, have I overlooked, um, Sharon, uh, um, uh, I know that you're on, on the call. Uh, anyone, um, WDTF members, WDTF staff, anything that I've overlooked as far as a review of the, the grants within the WDTF uh, grant opportunities. If you want to scroll down just a little bit more, we can talk about the pre-obligation funding opportunity. Thank you, Sharon. So uh, there is another opportunity for training that's available under our grant options that's really meant to help economic development entities that are working with businesses either here in Wyoming that are wanting to expand their workforce or they are working with businesses that are looking to move here to Wyoming and need to build their workforce. And so we have an option available where the economic development entity can submit an application to request to obligate some funding to be set aside for the training needs uh, of that workforce. And then once they're ready to develop that workforce, then they would go through the training uh, under the business training grant or under the pre-hire grant to actually do the training, but we have that funding that's been set aside to go towards that. And so um, it can be fairly complicated and in, in what that might look like because it's gonna be different for every business uh, that's looking to take advantage of this. And so if anybody on the call is interested in learning more or if they are in that scenario where they are working with an economic development entity to either come here to Wyoming or expand the workforce, we would love to have a conversation with you directly to learn more specifics about your business. Um, if there's an economic development entity on the call, uh, who you might be working with, and then we'll walk you through the steps to think about and to plan for and the timing of when to want to pre-obligate pre this funding. Um, and so I just want to let you know that that is an additional option under Workforce Development Training Fund, but it can get rather complicated and we would like to be able to speak with you specifically about those needs. Thank you, Sharon. Um, do we have any questions from those that are, uh, that are in attendance? Uh, uh, we would certainly love to um, uh, cater any of the uh, uh, any of the information that we provide to any specific questions that you might have, uh, whether it be for the grants covered or if you have just a general question uh, regarding the Workforce Development Training Fund. And Johnny, just real quick, um, some of the participants have been using the chat and Kelly's been responding to them um, to let them know their specifics. And so if you guys have your chat open and you've been paying attention to that, we do have some things that have come up that are all really good questions, but and again, in addition to that, if you do have some questions or something that's specific, now's the time where we're happy to help you with that. And of course, if you'd like to unmute yourself and ask the question verbally, we'd love to be able to uh, provide that as well. If not, um, 
for those that may have missed it earlier, here is the contact information for WDTF. This is the general uh, line 7778534. And this is the dedicated email that for all inquiries, whether they be specific or in general in nature uh, to WDTF regarding um, any specific grant or just for general information, uh, requesting a phone call, um, uh, feel free to reach out to us. We are here to help. Um, uh, we can help all the way up until the submission of the application. So we'd hate for uh, any questions to emerge after the submission of your application. We'd love to be able to address that prior to the submission. Um, any one of the WDTF staff that would like to um, chime in or any further questions from any of the attendees? Would like to again thank um, Sharon Geisler, who is the program manager for uh, WDTF, uh, Ivy Moore, who had, um, uh, did a wonderful job introducing, uh, for those who didn't know about the uh, apprenticeship grant, uh, Brittany Huffman uh, for uh, beginning our uh, our today and and uh, for all of the WDTF um, staff um, who attended today, we appreciate your attendance and being being at the ready in case there were questions that were posed for a specific grant area that you work in within which you work. If no one else has any uh, questions or comments, we uh, thank you again for joining us and uh, reach out to us. Let us know if there's anything we can do for you and hope you all have a really wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.